Yeah. Hello, hello. Friday. Sorry if you hear the dogs in the background. They're just a little crazy right now. Hi, Mike. How are you? Hi, Gloria. I got your package. I haven't done my video yet, though. Sorry. So what are you all up to? I'm all right. I'm doing all right. Uh, I'll be glad when um, insect season is over. Yes, Gloria, I love them. They're awesome. I haven't opened the paper up because you had it tied so pretty, but I wanted to make uh, the video and I just haven't had time. It's been a little crazy around here. Hi, Laurel. How are you? So I'm just working on some stuff for the newest journal that I'm making. I've got it, the signatures all ready to go. They're not sewed in or anything. And the cover is done except for book corners. So I want to make some ephemera for that. I bet. So bus driving this year is probably a little, um, what's the word? I'm hectic. Took your advice and mic back on the screen name. That's good. You can't wait to see what I make. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm ready to open it up and see what the paper looks like. Maybe we'll do that here in just a few minutes. Hey, Rhonda. How are you? So you want to see the book? It's a big one. This is made from a little golden book encyclopedia. So I redid the spine because the spines on them are... I have one behind me here. The spines on them are only like a half an inch, if that. And so I took the cover apart and it now has a one and three quarter inch spine. And it's huge. It's covered in fabric and the um, spine itself is two layers thick of Chipboard. I forgot the name. Hi, Deborah. And then I got my papers already. The sewing is the biggest part of it is done. So this is what we're going to be working on is things to put in this. It's got three signatures. And this is Tim Holt's paper. I did some stenciling in it. I just love the size. The size is like, ooh, lots of room. So I hope the screen is clear, unlike last week with my internet debacle. You need to do the same with the channel name. Any suggestions? Why don't you just make it Gloria Crafting with a Heart? I hi, um, Anna. How are you? Thank you. This is a piece of that metal that, um, um, what's her name? Dana sent me. I just heard my, um, Etsy. I had to get my camera here. Hold on a second. It's going to tell me it's in use. I'm sure. Because I see that my autofocus is on. Okay. Hi, Sandra. Okay. So, 
we're going to work on this piece that I have started for this. Sandra, this is one of those book covers that you were thought I was crazy for buying from um, Aaron. I've redone it. You now can't tell it was a little golden book encyclopedia cover. Okay, so I've took this little Tim Holtz piece off of that piece of paper and um, made a little pocket here on top of it. This is piano roll music or piano roll paper. Well, that was hard to say. I lost my ink. I had a, such a mess, I had to clean it up. That is going to be, I have two more videos of book flip throughs to do, and then I will have a video on how to attach the signatures to your spine. The, the hidden ones. Um, I have a tutorial up for the actually making of the book, but my video for attaching the signatures into the hidden spine or hidden signatures would not upload. So it's the only issue you have. It, it took me a little while to figure that one out and I've changed my technique a, a few times over the last couple years. Yeah, it will be, um, hopefully I will get that video recorded when I'm putting the spines in this book, the spines, because apparently it has more than one, <laughs> the spine into, the signatures into the spine. Oh my goodness. I can't talk. Yeah, when you do them and they're hidden, they are neater. You're good, Deb. You're good. Did you get your journal? Yeah, they said it should be there by Thursday, but you know how the U.S. mail can be. Um, sorry, I was blacked out there a minute because I had to pull down this little drawer of words. I wait to see Dana's in person. What do you mean, person? We'll be praying, Deb. I'm glad that the surgery went okay. Oh, I'm sorry about the setback, though. Oh, the one you want. Oh, okay. I forgot. I'm sorry, Sandra. I'm just a little slow today. <laughs> What's new with that, right? Yes, the mail is so expensive. Thankfully, we have a good um, person in our post office here that I use. The... Um, I went in and told him I needed a flat rate box because I was going to send a journal and he was like, where to? And so I told him and he's like, no, 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 that's too expensive. We'll go this way. Save me five bucks. So I'm like, okay. So I'm just going to add a word over this. Oh, I had to turn off my sewing machine. Yeah, I hope so. Surgeries are always scary. At least to me, I mean, you just never can get, I, you just can't be too, too prayed up for those, in my opinion. Ah, sorry, Sandra. We have, I, if the one at uh, my post office gets cranky, I just take a Snickers bar with me. <laughs> he laughs at me every time. Puts him back into a good mood. <laughs> he would fit in the commercial. 
Okay. So this is going to go onto a page in this direction. So you can tuck underneath of it this way and, and then have a pocket there. So we need to make a tag for it. Oh yeah. They won't touch my neck. The doctor just doesn't seem to understand that it's painful, which is irritating. And I'm using just a, a mix of whatever I have already cut out. Um, what I've already, you know, just trying to use what I have instead of getting something new. Maybe they're holding this bag. Yeah, they do. Hi, Michelle. How are you? This is some ephemera I got from Tailor Made Journals on Etsy. And I just sat here last night and inked up all the pages. And I'm just looking for something that will tuck underneath there that I like. I like it all, but uh, yeah. Well, they that that's the problem. They don't want to do mine. I have so many bone spurs, but they their answer to me is, "Well, it won't do any good for more than three or four years." <laughs> Oh, yeah, it doesn't, doesn't sound fun. So that will tuck underneath it like that. This, I'm going to ink up pages of it. Where my glue cap go? A fuse of my neck. I just want them to go in and remove some of the bone spurs. They said they can do it, but they don't want to do it because they'll come back. But they push on nerves. Yeah, I have so much stuff laying around that I've cut out for other projects and I didn't use all of it. And so I was like, I need to use some of it. So that can actually tuck right into that. I refilled my ephemera folder. We've got all this stuff. This is from Junk Journal Junkies, if anybody's a member of it. On the um, chat group, Deb Robinson had these little in there. Oh, Deborah, that does not sound in the least bit fun. Not that surgery is ever fun, but oh, it just sounds excruciating. Oh, yeah, I bet. I bet you can't find one that's comfortable. So, okay. There's a couple other little pieces of ephemera. I love this book. So, I have, when I checked the other night, I have one, I'm one person away, one subscriber away from having 700. So, next week, I hope to have up a video for a seven subscriber giveaway which will be the ephemera book that I made a couple weeks ago on my live. Oh, it doesn't hold everything. That just holds the stuff that I use all the time that I, you know, the most current stuff I have out. I, I have boxes of other little things over here. Hi, Dana. Ooh, that, that, that just sounds creepy, Deb. So we're going to add this to the signature. Dana, I used one of your metal pieces on this book. And they look cute. And I want it for the back. So I haven't sewed these together yet. So I'm going to take it out so we can work on it. Thank you.
Hopefully I'll have it done by Sunday and everything else that I want to do. So I'm going to put it in the book like this with a little bit of space around it. Artificial bones, that was painful too. Maybe I'll just keep my pain. <laughs> yeah, big creepy. I'm just putting glue on the stitches. Now you all are crafters. I'm sure you know that you have to put the glue on the stitches so that they don't pull back up. Because I glued the piano roll down with just a glue stick. And then sewed it so that it would stay together. And I used, of course, my art glitter glue. Thank you, Gloria. I have two more recorded videos. I've got to finish getting the journal listed in Etsy. And then I can put the journal up and the video up so it can be seen. So there's plenty of space under there. You can put a whole letter. I have a dead person bone. That's what Deb um, crafting room just said. Oops. I knew they did that. I've just never known anybody who had it done. Okay, so this is a piece of ephemera from um, Taylor Made Journals. Love her stuff. If you've never been to her site, check it out. It's awesome. So I'm just going to use that because I I didn't tea stain it. I put it through the printer and used old design shops papers, her own papers to put on the back. And it will slide in there like that. I'm going to put this back into our book. So I can get all the ephemera put together for these. I'll be a step ahead for what I have to do on the rest of the week. Hi, Miss. Hey, how are you? Cheryl. Did Cheryl sneak in? Hi, Cheryl. I didn't see you come in. So I'm putting the ephemera in my book. I have these um, envelopes that I made from a botanical book, um, herb book, that I'm going to put in there with some cards. I think putting that in that way will be good. I just got to remember, I got to go back and get the cards. I love when you have the ephemera already and you can just kind of go crazy with it. Let's do this though. I think I like the thought of this. Right there in the middle. All that pocket. Where'd my lid go? When this video is over, you can all say I flipped my lid. That's good, Christy. I love your mandala paintings. They're so amazing. I look at those little dots and think, I would have that paint all over me. <laughs> For real. Okay. Do that down and then we'll decorate that up a little bit. Hi, Sue. 
They are. I bet they are good therapy. They're probably really meditative. I love that one you did with the music. I was like, I could get used to this. I used to do Zen tangles. I wasn't great at it, but I did them, and I loved. I loved doing them. Okay. I like texture in my journals, so, and I try to find it with different things. Got some wallpaper here somewhere. I'll put it back in the drawer. Um, maybe, maybe I didn't. Let's see what we can use. I think these are going to be too big. Different plan, different plan, different plan. So I was telling them earlier, I'm on my, I'm one person away. So share my stuff. See if we can get me another person so I can make it to 700. That would make me so happy. Wow, yay. Yay, yay, yay. I enjoy making them. I enjoy it so much. I'm gonna put there. This is an Artie Maze. She has this on her whole thing. Her little Facebook group and it you know, Deb, I'm glad you like it. Up those white edges because I don't like white edges. And we might make a little tuck spot. I'm holding this stuff close to me tonight, guys, because my um, are hurting. But I still wanted to go live. Because if I don't go live just because I'm hurting, I'll never go live again. I would do it over again. Haven't been able to hold, move my head more than 20 years. Oh, wow. That's awful. I can move my head. It just really hurts. I can't find a comfortable space to lay down. Doesn't, just doesn't seem to exist for me. Partly because I have vertigo and can't sleep on my left side. That might be part of it. Christy, it'll have to be a little circle. Can't get this open. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that you got the help you needed. These are some vintage tickets. I do not remember if they were Brooke, Donnie, Aaron. I don't remember. But I'm sure it was one of them <laughs> that I bought them from. Stop page. This page is a paper clip. Um, let's see. What do I want to use to make a paper clip? I need a piece of paper first. You ever get up and you just have one of those days? And think today I'm going to have everything right, and no, I yeah, don't. It all still comes out backwards. Thank you. I sat here last night, or no, it wasn't last night. It was yesterday afternoon, and watched Natasha on her live, and she was showing stencils, and I'm like, oh, I got the stencil, and I found my favorite stencil, and went to work. 
think I want it that way. No, nope, I don't like that. Let's use something else. How about a ticket? You're going to be a new woman. It sounds like you'll be having a time of your life where you'll be able to feel so much better. Okay, so I'm going to ink the edge up. These are Tsunami Rose tickets. Um, yeah, I love stencils. Anybody see where I put that paper clip? Ah, there it is. Now, I have uh, a few from... Um, AliExpress, but not very many. Most of them I bought this year. I am a, kind of addicted to AliExpress too. But I bought a D stash of stencils um, from, I want to say it was Paula Fowler, but I'm not positive. Wish and I don't get along. My, um, I don't like their um, cost of shipping. Maybe on everything unless they've changed it. I haven't been on it in over a year. You pay shipping on everything you buy, which is crazy. And I thought if you bought the same from the same company, you wouldn't get charged, but they charged me twelve dollars in shipping, and the items was only six. And I'm like, nah, I'm done with that. <laughs> okay, so we want this to go this way. Yeah, the free items, but I like Allie because the shipping is more affordable and I don't know, it seems to be faster to me. At first I wouldn't use Allie because they don't use PayPal, but now I have a card that is, it's called Cash App and you can put money in it just what you need. Okay, so this is going to hold down this because it'll flip out completely. So you can journal in here and in here. I look at comparison of the two and think, well, with the free shipping or the 30 cent shipping from AliExpress, I still get the product in the long run cheaper. So this is a piece of music paper and it was not music on this side. So I decided to turn it into a pocket. But everybody likes their own things. Everybody has to do their own thing. to fold. I, I did this paper. All of this um, coffee dyed paper was done with vanilla in the coffee. And I sprayed it on the paper between two pieces of parchment paper and then ironed it dry because I didn't want to stand over my oven. It's too hot. But the iron, you're not, it's near as hot to to do the iron as it is to stand over the oven, in my opinion. Everybody got quiet.
Oh yeah, that's a good one too. It, uh, I do that too. Mine goes to a um, cancer research because I think you got to choose, but it's been so long ago since I chose and signed up for mine. I don't remember. I think it was some kind of cancer organization because my mom was, my mom died of cancer. My dad died of cancer. So it just seemed right to me. And then I also have Prime, so I love Amazon. So has anybody done the um, In Love Arts? They contacted me, wanted to give me product for me to do a video for their... Oops, I just put that on upside down. A video for their product. Ooh, Deb, what kind? Which ones? You know, I have an addiction to those right now. <laughs> I just got two today. I got God's Little Golden Book. And the Happy, the Happy Something. Disney movies. I have the Jungle Book. And that's the only Disney one, I think. But I, I was just wondering if anybody had done it themselves. Because I, you know, I don't, I mean, I signed up for it. I'm going to do it. I just didn't know if it worked out okay for them or, or not. The product they had looked nice, so. I'm just trimming the edges. I'll have to go to your Etsy store when I get off the live here and check it out, Deb. I don't like that. My mind does not know what it wants tonight. I have another poo book I want to make. Judy Evans Parker was kind enough. She found it while she was at a swap meet and picked it up for me. So excited to do that one because I enjoyed that one I made for that baby journal. It was a lot of fun. Just kind of doing a collage here. Oh, we don't want to put that. That's an address. That wouldn't be smart. Did you like them, Cheryl? I have this problem with opening things. Wow, Cheryl, that's awesome. That is Awesome. Okay. That's good to know. Because I had never bought from I've seen people review them and or seen that people had bought them, but I'm just making like a collage of different tickets right here. Those were some other little vintage tickets. I bought from, I think these are for Patty Lang. I think this is cute. Okay, Deborah. 
Cheryl, I don't know how you did it, but I am so happy for you because it is not easy, but it's so worth it. Hi, Rosa. How are you? I bet. I bet it wasn't. I know how hard it was losing 20 pounds and I was walking every day. So being bedridden, it can't be easy. But the good thing is, you did it. And that is fantastic. Okay, time for the butterfly girls. I'm good. How are you? I'm just kind of doing some layering. Green smoothies and supplements. Got rid of sugar. Yeah, sugar is awful. But I love this stuff. It's just no good. Do you, do you eat a lot of veggies? And I went to low carb and lost over 20 pounds. Well, that's good. I just, I don't know. I can't seem to get over the hurdle. I know cancer loves sugar. When my sister was real sick, she um, she became diabetic after she found out she had cancer. So it was a lifestyle change for her. But then at, by the time, by the end, she was down to like 89 pounds from started out eight years prior to that. It, and so but she's no longer suffering. So we're thankful for that. She had, um, I believe those as they are, she had ovarian cancer. She'd actually had it for quite a while before she ever went to the doctor. So... I love vegetables, but vegetables don't all love me anymore. I have, um, have what they call diverticulitis. And I like raw vegetables. And they really don't like person with diverticulitis. You got a good plan going. Well, good for you, Cheryl. My sister, she, she knew she was sick when my mom was dying, but she didn't say anything. Um, and then when she found out well, she was going to go to the doctor. We found out that they thought my husband had thyroid cancer. So we were in the middle of traveling back and forth two hours to a doctor there. And thankfully it turned out to not be cancer. But So she finally went in January of the next year and found out that she had stage four ovarian cancer. They really didn't think she'd make it a year. But praise the Lord, she made eight. So. But she, she, um, she's been gone two years. Let's find a happier subject. <laughs> happier subject. Let's see. Let's leave writing space. Let's try this over here. I'm going to turn my sewing machine on, girls. So, 
Hopefully it won't be too loud. Oops, I forgot I put my summer book down there by my feet. I'm like, what am I hitting? So I'm not going to be able to see chat for a second while I do this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Chat. Yeah, Rhonda has done amazing on keto. It. Uh, I've known several people who've lost a lot. Twenty pounds in five months. Good job, Michelle. I, diverticulitis is is this. It's ranks right up there with being the devil. Oh yeah, I and I, I miss being able to eat nuts. I love walnuts and pecans and hi Jackie. Let's have a tag or two. This is like I said earlier, this is very eclectic. There's no really rhyme or reason how I do things. I just, if I like it, it goes in the book. I miss the pop when I, I don't miss popcorn until I smell popcorn. I lose. I need to ink the edges of this and cover up my glue so that it doesn't dry out. They told me that I was, my A1C had went up to diabetic range, so I cut out my Coca-Cola. I now drink Coke Zero, and I am good, but I went to the doctor uh, yesterday, and um, I hadn't lost anything, but for six months I hadn't gained anything. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna knock it. Cause usually if I have to give up something, I compensate with something else and then I end up gaining weight. So I'm thankful I didn't gain any weight. But I do need to lose. Low carb for me is, um, it's just, I don't know. I can't seem to wrap my brain around it sometimes. Yeah, that is it. That is it, Cheryl. I can put on a pair of pants that I couldn't put on six months ago and they're still tight, but I can zip them now where I couldn't zip them six months ago or even snap them. So I'm not complaining by any means for me. It's got to be a lifestyle change. And I know myself enough to know that low carb for the rest of my life is not ever going to work for me. No excuses. It's just, it's just who I am. It's not going to work. And that's it. I, I don't, I don't have the discipline for it. And the fact that when, I, for me, I could go with all carb, but when something happens, if somebody in my family gets sick, I'll go for days and not eat anything more than a sandwich and have a Coke. And they'll be telling me to eat. 
But then when I find my appetite, it's like full on smorgasbord and it's all carbs. And my husband is a sick man. My brothers are sick. I just had my brother to the emergency room last night. The poor man has vertigo like me, and I wouldn't wish that on a on a sidewinder. <laughs> I know uh, it's just it's a horrible, horrible disease to have because when it hits you, you don't know if you're right side up, upside down, or even in the same county you were two seconds ago. These are some antique papery papers. Thank you, Jackie. But yeah, I, I've, I'm, I think if I do anything, it would have to be full on keto where you start out and then slowly add them back up. But I just think I'd, um, binge anyway. I think I would get to the point that I would. Would not hold, hold myself accountable. And there I go again. So I lost 42 pounds a few years ago. And I did it the right way. I ate what I wanted. But I did the portion control. And I walked. And and not that your guys' way is wrong. That's not what I mean. But I did it the right way for me. And it took me from February to November to lose 42 pounds. Then we went walking one day and I decided I needed to go underneath a bridge where it had flooded. I love bacon too. <laughs> I walked under that bridge and the mud and the silt where the river had flooded was over some rocks and I went down, hit my tailbone and I, that was the end of it. Is it hurt too bad to walk? Some days it hurt too bad to lay down. Oh, yeah, I, I can, but I work in a grocery store. I, I can't take all the junk out of the grocery store. From If it was in a different line of work, maybe it would work. But for me, I, you know, I can see me calling my the owner and saying, um, I'm rearranging your store. I'm taking out all of your snack foods at the front registers because I'm on a diet and can't have them. <laughs> I don't think he'd like me to. I don't think he'd like me very well at all. Yeah, it's it's ninety five percent of it is the mindset and the discipline to do it. And I know I'm not at that point right now. Like I said, I'm not trying to make excuses. It's just how it is right at the moment for me. Because everybody, everybody has their own demons to face and their own things to go through. And my demons aren't ready to be buried, I don't think. Yeah, that, that's, that's rough. That's rough right there. Hi, Don. Like that there. Where where do we want to put this? Maybe in another signature or farther back. Oh, we have a pocket here. So anyway. So how is Miss Dawn today? I'm looking for a piece of ephemera that I cut out the other night and I just stuck it over here. I don't know where it went to. This is no is no joke. I know that's that's it's bad stuff right there. I had a gnat get in the room and it's driving me crazy. Good night, Luz. 
Let's see. You have spinal stenosis too. Oh wow. Let's use one of these vintage um flashcards. I love these things. I bought them from I guess I need to make a little notebook that says Johnny or Johnny or Brooke. Because I'm not very good at remembering where I got things at. Oh, 10 years. Ooh. They told me I have the beginnings of degenerative disc disease, but I don't have any stenosis or anything. Yeah, I knew that was going to happen. I'm going to have to cut it down a little bit. Yes, it is an ephemera book that I made, the one that uh, I just had out. Have you not seen it, Sander? Give me one minute and I'll pull it out and show you. Get around these corners. I love flashcards too. Love, love, love them. I look for them everywhere. Radiation treatment caused yours. Oh, wow. You had breast cancer, right? Am I right? Not to be personal, but. Do you have COPD, Michelle, or is it something else? Okay, and then I'm going to do this side too. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Oh, thyroid cancer. Oh, yeah. That was, that's um, was a scary time when they thought Dan had it. Right. Well, you don't have to smoke to have COPD. They like to make you believe you have to have it, but you don't. Okay, so whoever gets this, buys this journal, let's turn it around. We have some true vintage ephemera in there. Your bell wasn't on. I'm sorry. Oops. Okay. So this is my ephemera book. It is made out of, what did I say? Five file folders. One, two, three, four, five, six file folders. And it is um, K and Company paper. And it's got vellum, little vellum pockets. It. I seen everybody else doing one and I wanted a bigger, bigger one. And then inside of each file folder where they come together is a big pocket. Well, at least you noticed it. This is all my stamps on this page. This one doesn't have anything in it yet. These are from the old design shop. I printed them off, bought them from her shop and just ephemera that I've gathered from other places. This one is long, so you can put, you know, longer stuff in there, taller stuff. These are from the old design shop. I think these are from Digital Collage Club. Club. Yeah, vellum. When Pat Catanz was going out of, uh, out of business, I bought a ton of vellum. So I just made the pockets to where I wanted them. Like I've got a little pocket here, the top that didn't have anything in it. I can put stuff in. It is like my favorite thing I've made for myself. And once I get 
excuse me, moved into another room. Because once my, oops, that was got in the wrong spot. When my daughter graduates and she moves away, I her room was actually once my craft room. Um, I'm going to move back into that room and I'm going to need more of these because I love them that much. Because everything's visible. I tried the ring binder with the little, what are they called? Baseball sleeves. And I hated it. And so then I thought, oh, I'll get the Project Life things, the smaller Project Life things. And I tried those and I still hated it. It was too floppy. This is more controlled, I guess. It, it, it was sad. It was very sad that they, they went out of business. But we are getting a Michaels here. Um, they're actually Pat Catan's last day was the 15th of this month. And um, they kept, the employees had the option to stay. So I'm thankful for that. Some of them did. Some of them didn't. Um. I've got these little cards somewhere. I have no memory, y'all. So if you send me something and expect me to remember exactly what you sent me, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's probably not going to happen. So they just all slide in these little pockets. I love them. Laurel, it's purple. The three ring binder didn't work with baseball card holders. The long items don't fit and don't hold much. Right. Right. It, for me, and it, it was just a hassle because they were, they're floppy, sturdy, and I can make, because I just used art glitter glue and glued this in, so I can make it to fit whatever dimension I want. Like, these are just for my butterflies. These are just little odds and ends of stuff I made and that I haven't used. And so, and I can put another one across there if I wanted to. Just glue it on. I can do the front, whatever. I just, I love it. And it fits right into your cubby hole. Mine actually sits right here beside the computer. And I use it all the time. And my friend Rebecca made me this one, which is nice. And it, it's nice if I was going to go somewhere to craft, to craft, but it's the plastic pockets too. So some of them are deep. No, but that, no, it's not all of my ephemera. It, I do have like, um, all of my vintage ephemera is together other than my stamps. All of my, like Tim Holtz ephemera, which I don't have very much of. I have the two. I can't get to them right now. Two crates, two boxes that stack together that have um, ephemera in it. But she filled this one with ephemera for me and sent it to me. Because I don't buy a lot of ephemera. I buy stuff from Patty, um, Patty, Brooke, Johnny, the ladies that sell, Natasha. Cheryl knows, and that's where I get my ephemera and I make it myself. Most everything, I mean, I used to, I used to buy it, but it just, it's so expensive for me. I don't have a Tuesday morning, so I'm paying full retail for, unless I go in three or four times and use a coupon at Michael's or um, Hobby Lobby, and we just got those, so. Um, well, I consider the, um, flashcards ephemera. For me, ephemera is anything that you can put. It's not sewn into the journal. It's that you use to write on. And, you know, maybe I have that wrong, but that's just how I look at it.
it, it's um, pretty flashcards and, and playing cards. Now I have playing cards. I have a little shoe box that's full of um, different playing cards. And you're welcome. Right. It's up to you if they are or aren't. Yeah. I mean, what is the uh, word I was trying to think of? <laughs> Project Life. I have Project Life cards and a few little odds and ends that I've bought in at um, Tuesday morning when we go to Columbus, which is once or twice a year. But since I started buying the real vintage stuff and I can copy the ones that are out of copyright and make what I want with them. So... That's what I've been doing. This is a piece of this. This is um, washi tape, but it has the backing on it. And so after I use the washi tape, I keep the backing and just turn it and sew it onto the edges of my pages. Flashcards can be considered standalone ephemera, or you can use a flashcard, which is usually fairly sturdy as a back to build on. Same goes for playing cards. Right, right. And hello, Brenda. <laughs> okay, so we need to put something here just to give it a little bit of a little bit of color onto that paper. We have tickets. We have tags. We have. A little bit of everything in here. You know what that was? Sure. These are um, little herbs that I printed out on the smallest setting for a cookbook journal I was doing, and then cut them out with a scissor, decorative edge scissors, which I thought turned out cute. Night, Deb. Sorry if I'm missing chat. Just want to get some stuff on this page. That's the hard part about doing the live. You get so engrossed into what you're doing that you forget to read chat sometimes. Quick and easy, okay. I, I like quick, easy items. That's why I spend a lot of time. If I'm watching a live or watching a sale, I'm usually crafting along with stuff that I can do easily and not get, especially if it's something when I have money. If I don't have a lot of money, I just turn it on for background noise and if they're there, them to get their watch time. Sorry about the reach over have a magnetic dish there. You're welcome, Sandra. I watched Gail Augustinelli do one of hers and but they were all just in my mind for me, they were all too small. <laughs> like go big or go home in my opinion for myself. <laughs> I didn't even pull my Halloween stuff out this year. Wait, I just wasn't feeling it. I want to do some Christmas, I think, but I just haven't been in the mood really for any holiday kind of ephemera. Kind of just doing my own little thing. Use a piece of this washi tape. Yeah, I like Gail Augustinelli's work too. She's a very talented lady. Wasn't feeling it, but then you was. I made a cute Halloween pocket letter, which I plan to give away if anyone's interested. That's cool. I had I own exactly two pocket letters. <laughs> Can't get it apart. I 
have one that Go Glitter Girl sent me. And the other one I was in a swap or something a long time ago. It just was never any, it wasn't something I ever got into making a lot of. True. That's very true. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what it's kind of, it's probably a two-part epoxy that, or something. Bohemian Crafter. I'll have to check her out. That's cool, Dawn. Okay, so there's that page. This is a corner tuck in that direction. And this is part on the live. I don't think I've ever watched Bohemian Crafter, but the name sounds familiar. Good night, Sue. So it's really hard to tell for me because I watch so many people. This is a piece of vintage lace that I sewed down into the corner. Uh, I, yeah, I love when stuff late at night, but my the older I get, the worse I, I am. I, I fall asleep earlier and earlier. Don't celebrate Halloween. Let's see. So I want to leave space for whoever gets this, buys it, whatever, to... This is a piece of an herb book. To put their own spin on things and put their own ephemera in. This brush... I absolutely love this brush for when you lay something down and you're going to ink it this way. I have a hard time doing it this way. The edges, I still use this to ink edges because I can get more ink on it. But I love these brushes because they wash so easy. And you can just take them over a damp paper towel and clean them and go on to the next color. It's just, yeah, there. I have six of them, five or six of them. Not all that size. Okay. This piece of tracing paper. And we have another pocket here. Hopefully this is not too... Um, Repetitive and mundane. <laughs> Too boring to watch. Another one of those tickets. Cool. Put that there. I decorated these probably three months ago. And just kept collecting things that I was making. Yeah, they're, mine are makeup brushes. This was actually, I can't tell now, but it was the front page of the, the book that I altered to make this journal. And let's see, writing space. And this is a double pocket. Again, this is uh, ephemera that I'm using right now is Tailor Made Journals. I think that's the name of her Etsy store, too. Okay, I missed something. Yeah, I saw that the Dollar Tree. Um, little um, makeup brushes. 
Uh, some of them. I don't know if mine has. I haven't been in my Dollar Tree in probably two months. Yes, this was her digis. I'm sure. I will link them, the, the kit that it was in the description box after the video goes goes up after the live. I love her digis. I like um, oh, her name just went out my window. Tracy Fox. And I buy a lot of antique papery. I bought some from, um, I do a lot of digital collage club. Just be, hers are awesome. And I got, I can use her whole website just for the one year free. Yes, Artie Mays. I've been using her stuff tonight and I could not think of her name. Thank you. Telling you, I'm getting senile over here. <laughs> yeah, and there's another person, but I can't think of the name. I use Johnny's from Junk Journal Shop. She has some digis on hers that I love. Um... Wonder Bar, Wonder, Wonder Bar, Denise at Wonder Bar Crafts, I think's her name, I think it's Wonder Bar Crafts. I love my digis because I can print out whatever I want when I want to print it and I don't have to store anything but white paper. Dollar Tree also has a very soft but sturdy brush shaped like a, a fish. It actually works better than Timmy's soft brush for spreading glue, gesso, or other spreadable medium. And it's very easy. Uh, okay, soft brush. This is my go-to for mediums, glue and mediums. It is made by Master's Touch. It's a one inch brush and it is solid. It's silicone. And I got it at Hobby Dobby Duda. I like her too. Um, I got it at Hobby Lobby, at, but it's by where the um, paint brushes for painting like models and that kind of stuff. So I love this thing. You can wipe it clean with a baby wipe and you're done. And if you forget to do that, it peels right off. So I was like, I told my husband, I said, we go back to Hobby Lobby. I'm getting another one. They have a wider one. And then they have a smaller one. I love them. Uh, they have some on... Um, Amazon, a four pack of them, but they're, they're, they call them epoxy brushes. But this one, I just happen to be there. I think it's great being able to print your own paper. If I could, I wouldn't buy, I, I still buy paper pads, but uh, I don't buy near as many paper pads. I'm behind in Tina's challenge, Shabby Dabby Duda. I'm doing her alphabet challenge. I think she's at H and I've only done B and C. <laughs> yeah, I haven't joined any challenges lately. I joined um um oh goodness, my brain tonight and words they are not working together. Tammy at my world in OKC asked me to join her design team, so I did that. 
And that was fun making the first project. I have the second one in mind. I, d I print on both. It depends on if I've taken the time to iron the papers or not. If I haven't ironed them, then I just print on regular paper. And I have a, a Canon printer. It's, um, I get the ink fairly cheap. Yes. Tammy. Oh, goodness. Sorry if my head just got in that picture. <laughs> I dropped the word I was going to use. I have gotten the equipment a little, little pieces at a time, Sandra. That, yeah, that works too. I, I just, I'm too impatient. <laughs> Usually I'm dyeing paper for each project that I need to do because I don't dye it ahead of time. In the winter, I put it, it's too wide. I put it right in front of my, um, my desk is in front of our wood stove. So I turn around and I dry the paper on the wood stove on sheet pans. And it gives it a different effect. Looks really cool. Yeah, you just have to, to do it a, a little bit at a time. You can't, most of us can't afford to go out and just buy everything we want at one time. I got my, I had a printer that was, hi Pearl, that was so expensive. And to buy the ink for that it was just more economical for me to buy a new printer because the ink was going to cost me $60 for the colored ink and I could barely print anything and it'd be out of ink again. So I got this printer for $79 on HSN. I didn't think you could beat that. Excuse me, I need a paper clip. This journal is probably going to be the most expensive one that I've had in my shop simply because of all the ephemera and the amount of real time that I have had into it. I need to learn all the, that, Paula, and I really don't have patience for technology. <laughs> you would make it, Sandra. You would make it. I need to use this little piece of washi tape somewhere. Somewhere, somewhere. I think I got enough pockets in this one. Let's put it here. And let's put something over that. Another little ticket. Yeah, the, the, if you don't get a printer that has individual inks, um, then your your um, ink costs you more than than the um, printer did. Yeah, I've done that. I have some seven by 11, 11 paper that I can't print. So my next printer down the road will be one that will print larger pieces of paper. This is just a vintage ticket. Put it in this corner. I like dyeing paper too. I like a dying paper. Okay, so there we go. And we have this small pocket on the back side, and that one will be done. What do we want to put in there?
It's not expensive to... Oh, yeah, it's not. That's... I can't believe how much this kit from um, TaylorMade Journals, how much was in it. I was like blown away when I bought it. Oh. Okay, so there's that. Signature one is ready to be sewn. And two more signatures. And I may have to go back there and take some stuff out because that's why I'm putting all the ephemera in now because I want the book to not be an alligator. I want it to sit flush where whoever buys it can open it and use it for what they want. And this way I can take out what I don't, don't need in there. Yeah, her, her digis are awesome. There's still one lady that I'm missing and I cannot think who it is. This is the Tim Holtz paper I sewed onto this one. Aww. I love a lot of the papers that come from Michael's and um, Hobby Lobby, but my problem is I like... 80% of the paper pad and the other 20% I'm like, you know, I don't know why they put that in there. So I end up using it to cover it up with something. So I'm just strange that way. Calls me mom because that's what his mommy calls me. She is mommy and I'm mom. Hello, oh, that's cute. That is cute. He was adorable when you were having your sale. I was like, oh my goodness. I love kids. Love, love, love kids. Just made me want to uh, find my daughter and hug her. But she would be like, mom, get away from me. <laughs> the digis that I bought... I, I've never found one that I don't like. This one, I'm not putting anything on. I love... I, I love Tsunami Rose, too, but no, that's not who I'm thinking of. My brain just will not go there. So I'm just going to put the ephemera behind it. He wanted those... Um, Foam pads you were standing on for sure, didn't he? <laughs> Pearl's grandson came on the live where she was selling stuff and he was just too cute. I think he stole the show for a few minutes. All right, this one is a pocket. Let's try this. Let's see how this works on here. That looks cute. We can just put a paper clip on it. And I, I love storage boxes. This is compartment boxes. They're like addictive to me. When they are here, I'm top liver. I love it. He was just so adorable. It's just, oh. It just melts your heart. Kids are just too cute. This paper was completely straight, but when I put it through my, my um, what's the word? I'm like a trimmer. My blade caught and decided to shred it, but I liked the way it turned out, so I kept it. I just inked it up. Yeah, I collage a lot over them or I'll take pieces from them and collage them elsewhere. Let's see. 
open the little book. Let me use a vintage, or not a vintage, but a card here. Oh, I know what I can use, but they're in the other room. Hmm. I have some real vintage postcards that I could use. Well, I bought at a antique store. Yes. My little nephew, great, great nephew was here probably about a week ago. He's 19 months old and his sister is, I think she's four or five months old. And with Connor, that's his name, he decided that he needed to play with every flashlight that was at my brother's house. And he had them all out and he was walking around like you do on Halloween with the flashlight looking up at your face, you know, and going, boo. <laughs> That's cool. Go ahead. I don't mind if you copy me. I'm going to put this kind of at an angle because... It's just how I want it. Not a ephemera book. I thought about making a couple of them and putting the vellum pieces in about the same way I have mine and putting them in my Etsy store. Got to find the time. Time is really a hard thing to find sometimes. Yeah, it is my go-to when I'm making journals because I don't have to dig because I, when it gets down low, I go through all my other stuff and I put my ephemera that in and refill it, if that makes sense. Okay. It just makes the journal, when you spend all the time putting, getting the ephemera together and have it in one cohesive place, it makes putting a journal together go so much faster. And I have all these ideas in my head, but they don't always work out. Uh, yeah, most moms like to keep their babies at home. I'm probably atypical on that because I just want mine to go out and make a good life for herself. And I don't, I know in my heart that it's not going to be here. I know it. Threads. When my daughter moved to college, it took so much out of me. I'm like, mm. so that is how this whole YouTube thing started, actually. I started out making journals. I was watching Jan from Jan's Crazy Life, and um, she pretty much talked me into starting a YouTube channel and the rest is history, as they say. I think you're always going to miss your kids. They're not close to you. Okay. What do I want to put? I want to put this on here, but it's an envelope. And I decorated the front. Let's do it as a top. Okay. 
I'll read chat in a minute. Oops, no going on this side. I've lost a lot of chat, I see. To go the girls use more than they were. I know my mom's like my little daughter is an hour away with the baby. Oh. My oldest is 47 and she has a 26 year old son. My son is 45, no children. My youngest just turned 40. She has a 20 year old and a three year old. I enjoyed the heck out of this last grand. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah, that's far from, um, far from you in New Mexico, Michelle. My daughter's three hours away right at this point, but she is in school to be a graphic designer. And in advertising and the jobs here are not as well paying as ones out of state. So she had a job offer in from our nephew actually in Oklahoma City. So that would be comforting in the fact that there's family there, but I also raised her to be, uh, not I, we raised her to be a very independent person. So I think she is being a very independent person, considering I have to call her to get her to find out if she's still alive. <laughs> what about there? Okay, but I'm not going to say that. It's 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 a, an awesome feeling when you're a parent and your children make something of their lives. To me, I mean, I couldn't be more. There's going to be the first person in my family to graduate from college. And that makes very proud mom first person in Dan's immediate family to graduate college and she has set goals for herself that I would never ever put on her the only thing we ever told her in school was do the best job that you can possibly do that doesn't mean you have to bring home haze it just you have to I have to know you put effort into what you were doing Okay, this is going to dry a little bit. I think I want this bird. Is this, like I said, this is a very eclectic journal. I think I'm boring my husband over here. I thought I heard him snoring. I guess maybe because I only have the one, it either way, it's going to be an empty, empty nest for me. I'm not going to have one to hold on to. So mm -hmm. we have our dogs, so they become our babies when our baby grew up. <laughs> Good night, Sandra. I don't even know what time it is. Oh, it's 10 o'clock. I have a tendency to put too much ephemera in. Have you all noticed this? <laughs> like more, more. 
The oldest grandson has our first grand. He graduated from Georgia Tech a few years ago with zero student loans and a 70000 k job. Wow, that's good. He and his mom worked with their, their fannies off. So proud of both of them. That's awesome. That is really awesome. Ashley has some student loans, but minimal in comparison to a lot of people. She has scholarships. She could have had a uh, pretty much a free. Got a few. Yes, I stenciled the the, the um, circles on all the pages to bring it all co cohesive. There. That's good, Michelle. It's good that they graduated. I, I wanted to go to college, but I not even know that there was programs out there that could help you pay for college. And when I graduated high school, it was not something they shared with you. And I still think they need to do a better job of getting kids into um, technical colleges, career colleges, and nursing schools and all those kinds of things because they just, they don't, they worry about the wrong things. Ashley had straight A's most of her school years, but when it came to math, she was a very, um, sh she struggled a lot. She, um, just didn't get it, and it's something I will always blame the Wood County school system for because of the type and the way they decided to start teaching math the year that she started school. Um, she's not the only one from her class that has issues. I don't think it's a it's a have to thing. You don't have to go to college. At, at your, you can get into life. It's I think just college helps you to have that step away from mom and dad and into a um more independent life. But that is if mom and dad have well I don't know I have so many opinions on it. The, the ones that go to college that didn't actually have to work to get into college, I think it's, they go to party. There we go. If you don't go to school to party, <laughs> you're good. Yeah, because not everybody is college bound. I mean, not everybody wants to sit in a classroom. Not... It's like Ashley said, I could get a job doing what I enjoy because I'm good at art without a degree, but the degree helps to get me farther into the job world of what I wanted to do. I worked in banks too, Don. I became an assistant manager, but because I didn't make my quota, they got rid of me. Ooh, that's not fun. She is. She. She. I, I. Maybe I sound like an overly proud mom, but I am. I couldn't. Be, well, I just dropped that out. Couldn't be prouder of her. Just ran into something. Sometimes chairs on wheels are not a good thing. <laughs> Another pocket there. Yeah, have to be because, you know, we are our children's advocates and our children deserve to know we are proud of them. I need something lighter. <laughs> Big rose. 
Mike Rowe has it right. Too, too many unfilled jobs because their kids are going to college and coming out with skills they actually, without skills to actually do something productive. Yes, that's what I mean. They need to teach kids that not every person has to go to college. That there are trade jobs out there that don't require college education, but are a necessary thing in our lives. And people pay for their services because you have to have them. Technical schools for electricians and and I think a lot of our colleges they they're messed up in the aspect that when you go to apply for college, you have to go through basic core classes: math, English, science, history. And if you're going to be a um, an artist, you don't need math, history, science, and all that. You need to get into the classes that's going to help teach you how to do the job that you're going to. They need to focus on the career that the child is going after, if that makes sense. Because, you know, you're, there, it's, it's, that part of it in me is just a money thing where if you go to an actual art school, can't afford. I mean, she applied at an actual all art school, but it was like sixty thousand dollars a year, which is just beyond crazy. And they don't make you do all that. They focus on what you go in for, which is the wonderful part about it. You just can't afford it unless you want to be in going into debt for. Hundred thousand dollars in two years. But I'm never going to be able to fix the education system. So So I'm not going to try. <laughs> Yeah, they're qualified, a lot of people. And I, and, uh, and that doesn't make sense either. I, I agree. It doesn't make sense to not hire somebody that has the skills and knows how to do the job because they don't have a degree in their pocket. But trust me, I know. Like it doesn't make sense to not promote somebody who knows how to do the job, has done the job for say 20 years, but because that person um, is good at the job they do, they don't want to let them be advanced. Right. Why do you need to have a degree to clean offices or a secretary? Yeah, I understand that. On the job training in those two things is more than more than enough. Yeah, but I mean that they need to rethink that because you're hiring somebody to do a job because they have a degree. Okay, well, in that aspect, if you're just going to be cleaning cleaning after somebody, you don't need that degree. You need the chance to prove that you're going to be able to do that job and going to carry through with what you were hired to do. Yeah, it, it doesn't make sense, but you're right. That's the way it is. It's kind of cute there. What do you think? The, the company that I work for, 
I've worked for them for 20, 20 years. And they needed a new co-manager. I've pretty much done the co-manager's job for the last six years. But they overlook me because of the job I do. And I know how to do it. They, they overlook you. They don't, they don't want to see, I wouldn't have taken it because I can't lift, but the fact is that you were overlooked is to me redundant. Yeah, it depends a lot on the job. So. Now, if you're going to be an electrician and you've not been to any schooling, then that could be a problem. If you're going to be a doctor and you haven't been to school, you have a problem. But if you're going to go answer a telephone and you haven't been in school, unless you don't know how to write or to properly answer a telephone, then I don't think you need a college education. At least not a four-year college. And I think the most overrated degree in the world is a business degree because that's what everybody goes after. I don't, I don't know. I don't want to be, I just want to be, um, for lack of a better word, recognized for the job that I do and not being taken for granted that I'm going to do the job and, and do the job of two or three other people that I'm not supposed to be doing. But the manager that's in charge doesn't know how to do said job and doesn't want to learn. And they allow him to get away with it. It's just, oh, just the most aggravating thing. And he knows I'm not going to not do it. Um, because the one of the things that he is supposed to do, and I'm not supposed to have anything to do with, is payroll. But he knows I'm not going to not do it because I have to have a paycheck. I can't live without my paycheck. Use that card on there. And they, they just act like they can get any person off the street to come in, sit down at my desk and do what I have to do. And I'm sorry, you're not going to get most people to come in off of the street, sit down at my desk, take over your pricing, take over doing answering the telephone, take over doing the manager's job as he walks around pushing the buggy. It's, you're just not going to get it. Yeah, uh, we have, I've been, I started out under a corporation owned us and then a private company took over. They bought it out. So my time went back. I worked there from 99 to 2003. And I lost all that time because a, um, a different man bought the company and it's a small company. So, because the corporation that had it no longer wanted it. So he bought nine stores in the area and he's now down to five. So, all right. I think we're in this pocket. And I hope I don't sound like I'm complaining because that's not my intention at all. It's just frustration. It's, it's frustration when he comes to you and goes, oh, I hired four new people. Can you stop what you're doing and put them in the computer so they can clock in and, in and out? And then he goes up and leans on the office door. Anyway, it's just mind-blowing. 
And on top of that, they fired him four years prior to making him a manager, a store manager. They fired him and then brought him back as a store manager. Doesn't make sense. Okay. Whoa! Dropping things. That's right. Yep, I think I'm going to have to take a little bit out of somewhere. Love the floral. I'm in love with the whole book. I just absolutely love it. Now I'm wishing I had made the spine about two inches wide. <laughs> it is so pretty. And once I get the, sign, the signature sewed in. Well, I'm glad I've had company while I do this. One more signature to do, but it's after 10 o'clock here. And I have to be at work at 7.30 in the morning. And my, um, my helper has been off sick for three days with an infected tooth. So I probably will be on my own yet again tomorrow. So I'm going to have to jump off here and you can't wait to get a journal from me. Well, once I do this giveaway thing, you can sign up for the giveaway. It'll be next week sometime. I'll be putting it up and it will be a journal well, not this one but it will be a journal that i'm going to be giving away and you can try to win that because i i'm one unless i've gotten one since i've gotten on here one sub away from having 700 subs my goal of getting to a thousand is slowly getting there but i about every 200 um Growth of 200, I try to do a giveaway of some sort, but I'm definitely, it's, um, it's either going to be a journal, Jackie, or the ephemera book. I have yet to decide on that, but either way, it'll be, I think it'll be a worthwhile giveaway to enter. And uh, just one word of advice, y'all. Don't put your hand in the ink pad. <laughs> I did that earlier. Anna Wright is in my Instagram liking my page, my photos because because I tagged her. Oh, that's cool. It, uh, the journal, I probably will do, maybe do two. Um, and the one will be like a small one signature journal. I gave a journal away at 500, I think it was. And Miss Rhonda won it. So, but I am going to go. Yeah, I don't know who that is, Dawn and Anna Wright. Oh, stamp design. Oh, well, that's cool. And that's cool. It's kind of how I was when um, Crafty Irina popped up in my chat last week. She's been in my chat two or three different times now. But the first time she popped up in there, I was like, oh, my gosh. Because <laughs> she is one of the first people I ever watched do a journal. And kind of really her and um, Dealey Girl 1961 think is how you say it um deli girl 1961 um were the first two i watched and i i love both of them oh that's cool yeah i think i'm done i'm going to get off here and let my husband have his TV back and I'm going to go get ready for bed and hopefully some sleep. And I will see you all Thursday, but I will have a couple videos up 
in the next week, plus the video about the giveaway. And I have a lot on my plate to do. So, but I was happy I got four videos uploaded. They just haven't been released. Impression obsession. I've never done that. Never. I've never seen those stamps, but I saw some the other day that was just oh, fantastic. All right. Well, you all have a wonderful night and I will see you next week. I am a little bit of a stamper. Not a much. I have a hundred of stamps, but good night. All right, find the end stream. <laughs>